Hello, hope you're well. I'm going to speak up a bit more this time because the sound system isn't brilliant. I hope you can hear me okay. And the book I'm looking at is Red Notice by Bill Browder. Now, before we give you my opinion, let's look at the explainer video we put together. So, double click, let's go. Red Notice takes us on an incredible journey through the life of Bill Browder, an American businessman who found himself entangled in the chaotic world of Russian finance and politics. This autobiography paints a vivid picture of how one man's ambition led him into a perilous web of corruption, danger, and ultimately, a fight for justice. The story kicks off with Bill Browder's early life, growing up in a family of successful Americans. We witness his transformation from a young and ambitious financier to a savvy investor with a passion for the potential in emerging markets, particularly in post-Soviet Russia. As Bill moves to Russia, he takes on the challenges of building his investment fund, Hermitage Capital Management. Along the way, he discovers the vast wealth hidden behind layers of deceit and manipulation. Browder becomes a vocal critic of the Russian system, advocating for transparency, rule of law, and accountability. Fraud bribery, corruption and torture are exposed at every turn. We join Browder in his fight for justice, when his lawyer friend Sergei Magnitsky is imprisoned and later beaten to death. This book is an inspiring real-life story, that shows how Browder was transformed from hedge fund manager to global human rights crusader. Okay, so... Again, it's one of these books I enjoyed reading, but it's very hard to know when it's just one person's point of view, how much is totally true and how much has been distorted. I get the feeling most of it is fairly accurate, but I'm sure there will be some pro-Russian zealots who will dispute this claim. Okay, so it starts off talking about how Bill Brado was looking for a rolling life, he didn't know what job he wanted to do, but he managed to end up being, being a trader and consultant for Eastern Europe, and he managed to find some Russian opportunities. Now, we have to stress, Russian opportunities meant taking money out and putting it into his investment fund, and there are some Russian voices who said, well, he was stealing from the Russian people. I'm not going to get into this deep debate about capitalism but there are voices which are against him. He started coming up against restricted practices and believe it or not initially a certain Mr Putin helped him to uh, let's say sanction certain uh, criminal oligarchs who were taking money out of the system. Now after a point and this is uh, what Mr. Bill Browder alleges is the, these oligarchs came to an agreement with Mr. Putin, gave him a percentage in backhanders, and then Putin decided to uh, chase this particular uh, management company run by Bill Browder out of, out of Russia. Initially, Bill Browder was forced to leave, and then they started uh, persecuting other members of that organization. Okay. The, the depressing part of a book starts about halfway through and we learn about how uh, Sergei Magnitsky became the lawyer uh, acting on behalf of Mr Bill Browder but he was put into prison on trumped up charges, tortured for a year allegedly but and then he, he died in custody. And uh, Bill Browder doesn't take this sit, uh, sitting down he launches a international campaign to sanction Russian officials who have been involved in this and he managed to get the uh, US government to pass the Magnitsky Act 2012 which allows the US government to sanction uh, foreign individuals or entities that are involved in human rights abuse. It's a very good story, I enjoyed reading it and it gave me a glimpse into what 1990s Russia must have been like.
There was so much wealth lying around, particularly in utilities companies, but very few people knew how to exploit this. But when they went in, they really made lots of money, billions and billions of dollars. Uh, a sad ending in that um, uh, Sergei Magnitsky had to die and his family have to deal with that, but at least it, it resulted in this Magnitsky Act, which is a, a kind of solace. Okay, so I'm going to give my points for this. Let's uh, reduce the size of my bonds. And I must remember to speak up so you can hear me. Readability, particularly in the first half, I found it very enjoyable. A bit harder to read in the second half, but that's mainly because of the uh, poor death of the uh, Sergei. So I'm going to give it 8.6, which is a good score. Reliability, I don't know. I'm going to give it 8.4. I believe most of what's in there, but some people will say you have to take it with a pinch of salt. Will I reread it? I'm not sure. Possibly I need to read other books on this subject, on this time zone, so I'm going to give it an 8. Right, so... That gives an average score of 8.3. It's well worth reading this book. Go and get it if you can. I think it's a good book for anyone interested in Russia and the way it's developed after the fall of the Berlin Wall. Have a good, good week until next week.